Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. I wanted to do a quick update today on the NOAA Polar Orbiting Weather Satellites, the satellites that a lot of people are familiar with as an easy gateway into the world of amateur satellite listening and amateur weather image downloading, namely NOAA 15, 18, and 19. Now, I did a video a couple weeks ago about how these three satellites, the last remaining ones on the US NOAA series that use VHF and L-band radio transmissions, are going to be retired soon. And when I did that video, the latest status that we had heard was that these three satellites would continue to operate, they would continue to stay in orbit, transmitting real-time weather data. Now, I have a bit of a sad update to that. Apparently, today, June 6, 2025, NOAA 18 is going to be shut down in about an hour from now, actually. So as I film this, they are planning on shutting down this satellite and repositioning it into a graveyard orbit so it will no longer be in quite the same low Earth polar orbit as it was before. It's going to be pushed out a little bit farther where it's not interfering with other satellites and all the radios are supposedly going to be turned off. Now, apparently the reason for this is a failure of the S-band radio system. NOAA 18 has several different radios. It has the VHF radio that a lot of people are familiar with that you can listen to with a handheld radio or a radio scanner. It has the L-band high resolution picture transmission channel. And then it has an S-band radio, which is also used for high resolution images, but is also used for command and control and for telemetry. Now, apparently the S-band radio has had some kind of a malfunction. It has dropped from about seven watts of power down to under a watt. So transmission on that frequency has significantly degraded, which not only affects the science and the weather images that this sends down, but it also affects NOAA's ability to control the satellite to get feedback from the onboard flight computer and unfortunately, it means that the satellite is no longer reliable. So they're planning on shutting everything down effective today, pushing it out of its existing orbit with the remaining uh, maneuvering fuel, and basically abandoning this satellite. Now, we do still have NOAA 15 and NOAA 19 for now. NOAA 15 has always kind of had some ongoing issues. And then we also have some other satellites like the Russian Meteor Series that use the VHF channels. And we have some other L-band satellites like the European MetOp series. So there are still going to be satellites that amateur radio listeners can hear, can download real-time weather information from. We're just unfortunately losing one of the best and most popular ones. Now, I looked at the timing on this. They're supposedly shutting this down. Local time for me, it's going to be between 12.30 and 12.45 p.m. But the next good pass where I will be able to hear it doesn't come until about 12.47 p.m. So the very next pass that I see of NOAA 18 might be right after it's been shut down. I'm a little curious to see, can I still receive anything from the satellite? Will we be able to see anything at all? Or will it just be complete radio silence from NOAA 18 at 12.47 p.m. here in the U.S. in the Midwest where I am? So let's fire up a couple of my antennas and we're gonna find that out. I'm going to actually look at all three of those common frequencies VHF, I'm going to be using my QFH antenna, which is actually set up as a automated NOAA weather satellite downloader. L-band, I'll be using the 3D printed helicone antenna on the little hacked TV dish uh, pointer system. And then S-band, I will be using my bigger hacked satellite dish that came from an old RV. Now, if you're curious about any of these antenna systems, I do have videos about each one showing what it does, how I hacked some of the TV satellite antennas to make these, and what kinds of things you can do with them. So I'll put links to those videos down in the description of this one. I will also be using this Raspberry Pi CyberDeck or homemade computer that I've showed in a few prior videos. So I mostly run these hacked dishes with this uh, USB to RS-485 adapter, which is kind of an industrial control system. And then that hacks into the brain for the dishes. But I need another one of these sets since I'm running two antennas at once. I'm using this other computer for the S-band and I'm using the CyberDeck for the L-band antenna. Now I think I just made another one of those cables and I think it lives on this dish, which has its own Raspberry Pi on the back. I can't use this for L or S-band. This one is set up for KU-band. That's just TV satellite stuff. But I have another one of these adapter cables that talks to the brain. So I just need to steal that one. It's just Velcro taped in place. And I can use that to run the L-band antenna. Yes, I realize I have way too many satellite antennas. 
All right, well, sadly, it looks like that was it. We are seeing nothing on S-Band from NOAA 18. The Cyberdeck kind of shit its pants here, so we lost connection to the dish with that, but we're running that off of my phone, and we're also seeing nothing on L-Band. And we're seeing some kind of wacky noise on uh, 137.9 megahertz, but no data. Well, it should be passing overhead right now, but no signal on any of the frequencies, so... Farewell, NOAA 18. It was a great satellite while it lasted. All right, we're coming up on the end of the pass, and that was it. Pass is over, dish is resetting. Well, it looks like that was the end of NOAA 18. It turned off basically right before it passed over me, so... I didn't even get to see its final message, which is a little sad, but I tried everything I could on every frequency, so I wanted to give it a good look and see if anything was happening. But sadly, there is no more data, no more pretty weather images from NOAA 18. Now we just have to rely on the remaining NOAAs, the Russian system and the European system, if people have the equipment for those. Now, NOAA 18 will probably stay in orbit for a while. Its existing orbit was already pretty high, and the graveyard orbit, I believe, is even higher. For example, NOAA-2, one of the original NOAA satellites, is still in orbit and occasionally still transmits. That one turned itself back on, basically, um, accidentally, and NASA and NOAA have no control over it, so NOAA-2 is up there spewing out data occasionally when it gets a little bit of sunlight on its solar panels, and I might be looking at that in an upcoming video here. So. If we're lucky, maybe NOAA-18 will become a zombie satellite like that. Maybe it will have some kind of issue in the future and turn itself back on. We can only hope. Until then, I guess this is goodbye to one of my favorite satellites and one of the easiest satellites for amateurs to pick up. So it's kind of becoming the end of an era. Radio satellite stuff is going to be getting harder in the future because everything is shifting over to S-band, X-band, more difficult, more complicated, more expensive frequencies to pick up, and some of these legacy systems that use L-band, that use VHF, are going away. There will still be amateur radio satellites that you can use as repeaters. There's one on the International Space Station, although that is also slated to go away within the next decade or so. And I think that's a real loss, not only to actual science, but to citizen science, to amateur scientists, school kids, experimenters, ham radio enthusiasts, people all over the world could use these satellites to find out more about satellites, about space, about weather. And it was a really cool opportunity. It was a really cool resource for just anyone in the world to use. Again, we'll have NOAA 15 and 19 for some unknown amount of time. We'll have some of the Russian satellites for some unknown amount of time. Those tend to wear out or have battery failures a little more frequently than some of the US satellites, so they're never very reliable either. So this hobby is certainly not dead by any means, but we did lose one of the most popular players in the game. Anyway, that's about all I had for this one. I just wanted to do this video kind of quickly, kind of look at NOAA 18 on its last active pass, which turns out I missed the last active pass because I was just a little bit after that decommissioning time, so didn't get to see anything, but it was still worth a shot. If you're interested to learn more about the NOAA satellites or any of the other satellites I've talked about, I have plenty of other videos on that. I will link some up above here, and I'll link some stuff down below in the description, and you can go check that out. Now, we do have plenty of satellite content coming up in the future. I have plenty of ideas for other videos. There are plenty of other satellites that I can listen to, both with easy-to-use equipment made out of scrap and possibly some more higher-end equipment, depending on what I get my hands on. So stay tuned for those. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.